Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series, Philosophical Ponderings, where we take a look at 10 games that have some deep philosophical storylines and meaning behind them. And today's a treat for me because I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite games of all time, Grim Fandango. I actually got this brand new in 1998, played it, fell in love with it, and I play it every few years ever since just to be able to inhabit the world that Manny Calavera and Grim Fandango take place in. As far as the reason I chose this episode, it has some really deep meanings as far as how one lives their life, or kind of how the decisions in your life inform the afterworld for you, if that is something that you do believe in. But the crux of the story is, if you were a good person in life, you will receive an express ticket to the Ninth Underworld, or the final resting place in Mexican culture, revolving death. But what Manny Calavera finds is that the system in death is rigged just like it is in life. And I think that is a very topical conversation right now where good people who work hard maybe don't get rewarded, where people that might not be the most moral or the most upstanding citizens are somehow able to make it further in life and amass riches and things that they might not deserve. And I thought that was one of the good reasons to talk about this game because that is so topical. But as far as the game itself is concerned, it's an absolutely beautiful adventure game. The art style, using a lot of those prototypical Mexican Day of the Dead motifs, colors and themes, and even the calavera being the skeleton in Mexican culture, it all ties itself into a really nice package where the visuals, the audio presentation, makes us one of the all-time classic great games in my opinion. Not just great adventure games, but great games. I would definitely say this is on my top 10 list of favorite games of all time. All of the dialogue, all of the audio, everything really just marries up into a package that makes this game incredible. What you're seeing here is that character just got the Excelsior line stick. He has a long walk to the ninth layer of the afterlife, where Manny Calavera is going to encounter some other characters that definitely are deserving of a ticket on the number nine train, and they don't get this. But the actual storyline of the game just kind of revolves around Manny Calavera's own story arc going through the different lands of the dead. And now he has a character redemption arc where he becomes a better person. And we don't 100% find out what it was that Manny did in life that causes him to have to work off his debt in the underworld. We just know that he's improving as a character as time goes on. So as much as you're trying to unravel the underlying story of corruption and deceit in this world, you're also redeeming Manny Calavera and improving his life along the way when he meets the character of Meche, who is his love interest, the woman that should have received an express ticket on the number nine train, who ends up being sent out into the world alone because of a corrupt system that benefits the people that have money or power versus the moral people. And I definitely, like I said earlier, that is a very topical thing right now, morality versus money accumulation and how our world works. We're seeing it in our current pandemic time where the rich are getting richer and the good hardworking people are probably not going to be rewarded from what's going on. So I think this is a story that definitely has a lot of topical nature to it. It's something that no matter when you play it, society has been working like that for a very long time. But as far as the gameplay is concerned, we are a gaming channel, and we should talk about that a little bit. It is your classic adventure point-and-click game. You do have movement with Manny, and you can either choose the classic tank controls or an analog control style in this remake. But if Manny turns his head and looks at something, you can interact with it. And it definitely has the classic LucasArts style of puzzles involved in it. Not everything makes perfect sense for the solution. Some of them are kind of funny solutions. Some just really don't make any sense. But if you've ever played a classic adventure game before, you're going to kind of know how to interact with things and be able to work your way through the world. But I would say one of the strongest points of the game, other than the setting and the music, is all the dialogue and voice acting. This game is impeccably written. Everything is funny. All the writing is sharp. All the character actors doing the voices are perfect. You have Gladys here right now, kind of a representation of more of like the id of the ego. He's the more impulsive person who wants to satisfy his base urges. And a lot of the different characters you meet along the way do have different personalities like that. You have Gladys and you have different characters that represent greed or gluttony, things like that. All the different like moral sins or compasses are included in the game. So it kind of makes up its own like fully fleshed personality. And I do love that about this game where each character represents a different sin or a different version of how somebody could be in death much like they were in life because in this game who you were when you were living is who you were 
when you die. Nothing really changes. Your personality carries through. So it's not like this reckoning where after death you become an incredibly good person. You are just the same person you were before, except you are now a skeleton, or in Gladys's instance, a demon. And demons do inhabit this world as well. You kind of have a mixing between both of them. And I think that is a really strong story point where you have all these different types of people all inhabiting the same world, and they all help each other to kind of become better people outside of the main villains of the game, which are definitely going to give you a hard time for sure. Interestingly, there are four different years in this game, and each day takes place on November 2nd, or the ending of the Day of the Dead in Mexican culture. Now, not being part of that culture, of course, I had to read and research about it, so I apologize if I'm not 100% on the ball with everything, although I did do my best. But I do appreciate that this game celebrates the dead and death in the same way that the actual Mexican Day of the Dead works. And a lot of the character design is very reminiscent of how Mexican culture would decorate for the Day of the Dead. And it's a culture where death is a celebration. Of course, it's a sad event, but death isn't the end. It's just the beginning of something new where maybe more of, you know, my cultural background is death is a finality. It's not something to be looking forward to. And when it happens, it is just the end. And I think, you know, that is something that this game does really well, kind of providing you a glimpse into a certain culture's idea of what the afterlife really is, because every different culture, every different background has a different idea of what death ultimately means for us as humans. Obviously, we are born and we will all die. No one's figured out how to escape death yet. And unless something changes by the time this video happens, we still don't have a solution to the ultimate problem. But I do like that this game uses those cultural references and kind of builds upon the history of the Day of the Dead to create an adventure game around it that's very respectful and very informative of how these things actually work. I think Tim Schafer did an incredible job on the research because some of these buildings that we're seeing here are modeled off real buildings in San Francisco. I actually visited one years ago when I was in San Francisco for work because I loved the game so much and I had heard a rumor that one public building was kind of informing some of the Grim Fandango design design and it was definitely on point but as far as like I said you know it is a gaming channel I want to talk a little bit more about the game it definitely progresses through a story arc where even though each particular area or level if you want to say year has a completely different setting the character that you were in year one is Manny Calavera evolves and becomes better and different as time goes on and then when you get to Rubicava the second level in the game it's very Casablanca gone with the wind style of storytelling, of setting, and of music, and the game does an absolutely incredible job of being able to give each place its own feel, its own vibe, that matches up with Manny Calavera's character evolution and the people around him. As the setting changes, you change. The music changes, the colors change, things take place at different times of the day, and it just builds upon itself to become an experience that is absolutely incredible. Now, some of the bugs from the original game are still in. There's a forklift puzzle, which will drive you nuts. So yeah, I can definitely say that in parts, it's a little problematic, but it's still amazing. What I want you to do is just watch this little sequence. I absolutely love it. You should be able to hear a little bit more of the game. And I'll come back in just a second and close up Grim Fandango. Hey, I look good in this, don't I? <laughs> yeah, well, they say black is slimming. I'm driving, yeah! I'm driving! Por favor. I could have walked faster than this. Ugh, híjole, I'm gonna miss the poisoning. I do love the representation of the living world in this game. It looks like our world, yet everything is so strange and so comical and so punched up that it really feels like what you might think of life if you were dead, if you didn't remember it exactly, how people kind of look and seem like what you remember and food is food, but things just aren't quite right. I'm not sure if that's just because Manny Calavera is visiting the land of the living from the dead or if it's just a stylistic choice, but whatever they decided and whatever reason they did, I think it's a really nice juxtaposition compared to what the rest of the game looks like. But I can't recommend Grim Fandango highly enough. 
If you have not played this game, you absolutely owe it to yourself to experience it at least once. The art is incredible. The story is incredible. All the dialogue is awesome. The soundtrack is one of the best, I think, in gaming ever, kind of mixing classic Mexican music with bossa nova and other genres to create just a soundscape that is unlike anything else in gaming. And I absolutely can just listen to the soundtrack without playing the game and enjoy it thoroughly. But as far as the story is concerned, like I said before, it kind of just examines who you are in life and how that informs your personal death. What you get in life, you may get in death. But sometimes what you think you deserve in life or what you actually do deserve in life, you're not given. Where people may have lived a worse life than you and end up doing better. And I think that's something we all experiencing, wondering why it's not happening for us, why we're not successful when we see people next to us that might not be as talented or might not be as good of a person and they seem to be succeeding where others are failing. But like I said, just play this game. I haven't given you much of the story because I want you to experience it yourself. But short of that, that is Grim Fandango, an outstanding adventure game, one of the best games of all time. Sadly, it didn't sell very well when it came out originally and it kind of killed the adventure game genre, at least for LucasArts, but it definitely deserved to be more allotted than it was then but thankfully the gaming industry and people have come around and this game now represents what it truly was in the first place which is an absolutely outstanding game with some of the best storyline storytelling in gaming that i've ever seen but that's about it i'll leave you with a little bit of the music of Bruvacava here the second stage of that new story but thanks so much for watching we'll be back on friday and sunday with more episodes and then again on tuesday with another episode and philosophical ponderings Short of that, I hope you really enjoyed the episode. If you could do us a huge favor, go down low and hit like and subscribe. Each episode takes a long time to make, and we really appreciate it. It helps us out. Minus that, hope you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.